everyone. Welcome to another episode of Living with Jesus series. Today I have with us the beautiful Katie, who is joining us from Ojai. Welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm so, I'm so <laughs> happy to be here. Thanks for bringing me on, Brittany. Absolutely. So I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I think what's beautiful about this is I kind of had an idea of what some of the answers might be for other people, but I have no idea what it's going to be for you. So I am so excited to receive this gift as the answers to these questions stream forward. Um, so yeah, let's just, let's just dive in. Uh, so the first question that I have is I just, I just want you to talk to me about your relationship with Jesus. Like, how do you see him? Like, who is he to you? Mm. Well, I didn't prepare anything because you, you sent me the questions ahead of time, but I didn't really think too much because I was actually hoping that I would just kind of receive whatever everybody out there also needed to hear. Um, but my relationship with Jesus now is very different <laughs> from my relationship with Jesus in the past. And that has come to me over uh, probably around 10 years, 12 years of kind of being slowly introduced to the idea and the possibility of Jesus as, you know, really not the person that I was taught to believe he was which was, you know, um, representing a very judgmental, punishing, self-sacrificing um, ideology. And now my relationship with Jesus is very much, I mean, very much like the Course describes, like an elder brother, you know, um, not, not to worship him, but to give him the respect he deserves that he's, he's further along than us. And also that he's been tasked with this like incredible um, job of, of kind of managing the atonement <laughs> of like kind of spearheading the atonement for all of us. So my relationship with Jesus is very much like, I just, I know I can feel his love. Um, and I can, I, it, and it's almost funny because when you know you know how the course talks about um you can't get beyond the error until you look at the error yes and the only thing that stops us from looking at the error is our resistance <laughs> so yeah. i find myself in many times when i'm feeling that resistance like that's when i generally speaking um need him the most and call upon him the most but my relationship with Jesus is a every morning throughout the day. It's like, and I, I just think about him like, a, like a best friend that I love, like, Oh, Jay, <laughs> like good old Jay, like my partner, <laughs> like my partner and I talk about him all the time and we make jokes about him and we joke with him. And there's like a dialogue throughout the day with him. It's not like he's this like savior being that's untouchable and unreachable and inaccessible we bring him into our life as a, as a kind of like, as a friend, as a friendship um, and a mentorship and like a buddy, you know, I think of him as like having a really good sense of humor, you know, <laughs> like I want to imagine that he's quite funny and, and like, just like the course says, it's like the tiny, you know, the son of God had the tiny, had this tiny mad idea that crept into our minds and we forgot to laugh. And not that we like, not that that's supposed to be taken literally, but I think that there is a lot of value and, um, a lot of, a lot of, I don't know, like high frequency energy associated with like laughter. And I think of him a lot with laughter. I really do. I know that's yes. like, I was like, that's what, that's my relationship with him. It's like, you know, if I'm feeling extraordinarily resistant, it's like, I, he's looking at me and he's like, you ready? <laughs> ready? I've got the lamp. Let's go. You know, like take my hand. And it's just, it's usually just me that struggles to release resistance. And that's where he comes in. He really helps me because if I can just release it a little bit, it's like, I'm, I'm almost halfway there when I'm, when I'm able to, yes. you know, share a little willingness to do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. There's a few things I want to like tease apart if that's okay with you. Cause I love what you brought up here, but like one is I can really hear and 
it's reflective because I, I feel the same way that Jesus is like an elder brother. Like he's been through it before. We can trust him. Like he's in charge of this atonement thing. Like you lead the way you show me. And all that's required of us, whether we're in that space of just resistance or even whatever emotions may come from fear, or even if we're just living our day, like you can say, just start my day with him. We laugh with him, like whatever yeah. kind of frame of mind we're in, like he is there and it only ever takes the little willingness, the little openness for him to meet us where we are and and, and take mm -hmm. us further. So I completely resonate with that 100%. Um, so I, I love that you brought this yeah. lightful, like jolly, um, yes. playful, you know, energy to Jesus. It doesn't have to be so serious because he's, he, I mean, salvation is serious, but he also even says in the course, because we brought up the course, salvation is a game that happy children play. <laughs> Right. Like it's oh, wow. I have I can't remember that part. I've never heard that. I love that. Yeah, oh maybe I'll put some quotes below our video or whatever. Um so people can look at it if they want. But yeah, like that's that's what it's all about is Jesus wants to return us to the truth. And the truth is that God created us as his happy children and souls. So of course Jesus would be lighthearted. Um so thank you for mirroring that back because I agree and I experience it the same. <laughs> I mean, thank God, right? A little lightheartedness. Yeah. Like, yeah. thank God my vision of Jesus as the judgmental uh, Christ versus the, like, loving, playful elder brother who's like, come on, like, come on. Come on like, <laughs> it's so different. And when we're really deep in those states of suffering and pain and, like, psychological, emotional pain, as we all know, we've all experienced, it can just be so, so physically painful as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It, it's it's a feeling of like it, that Jesus is the energy and the being which I call upon in those moments because it yeah. does lighten it up. It does help me remember that I've taken it seriously. You know, it does help me remember I've made something that is illusion real. And exactly. so, you know, we, we need that reminder pretty much regularly these days because there's a lot to trigger us these days there's a lot coming up for the collective and for in us individually i don't know anyone out there who is not going through some form of like squeeze exhaustion activation of all the unconscious stuff i mean I, I, like everyone i talk to yeah. is going through this on some on some level Absolutely. it's kind of like a marathon yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot. And that's why we need Jesus because we need help from something greater than ourselves. Um, yes, we do this stuff because it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. Um, we can do it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so you've already mentioned that you had this perspective of Jesus that, you know, came from your past that more of like a judgmental mm -hmm. Jesus. And now you see him in a completely different light. Um, mm -hmm. But what was that turning point that led you to come to really accept him in your life? <laughs> okay. You ready for this? Like, bring it. This was like not what I was expecting at all. So years ago, like maybe like six years ago, I got a very strong intuitive guidance to go do an ayahuasca weekend. So, you know, I haven't done plant medicine since then. Never felt called back. Um, I was very scared. I'm not like, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm very comfortable with psychedelics of any kind. I'm, I'm always like, you know, when I was younger, I was always like the one to like nibble on a little mushroom, like where everybody was <laughs> like, I, I was always just scared of where my mind would go because I knew my mind was I knew my mind was very painful for me. So I like anything that would take my mind into states that were beyond my control really terrified me because I was always just kind of like holding my mind together in a way because it was so judgmental, so attacking. You wouldn't know that from the outside, right. but there was so much going on. Um, and so I got, I remember talking to a friend who's now um, studying to be a therapist, funnily enough, and she had gotten, she recounted her experience and I was just like in tears like hysterically crying and I knew I had to go so very much guided by my inner my inner GPS mm -hmm. you know the whole way up there I was just like in this state of bliss it was really interesting and then when we came around to share intentions my intention in the group was to meet the love of the creator and so I met that. I, I I didn't even know that I was supposed to have an intention. It just kind of was like came out of me. And then I experienced that. I had a full Christ consciousness experience where I, 
I experienced what it is like to be at higher levels of consciousness and to be looking down on the 3D egoic plane. It's like, it's like fear doesn't exist up there. It's not even, re it's not real. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter. And so I was just like having essentially what I feel was like a Kundalini flush of energy, just flushing, flushing, flushing through my body. I felt I was the Christ in that moment. I had a, I don't know exactly what happened. I can only describe it as I kind of like melded with Jesus, like my Christ, the Christ and I into the Christ, as we know it as the one, like I melded with Jesus, who is the template for that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was just like, oh my God, I just felt this enormous love, this enormous love that Jesus has for us, this enormous love. Um, now, again, I was uh, interpreting a lot of this from a, Cath a Catholic point of view, like this yeah. idea of sacrifice came up. My understanding of that intellectually is very different now. It's, it wasn't a sacrifice. It was a demonstration of love. It was a demonstration that death is not real, the crucifixion that is. Yes. And so, yeah, so this, like my, some of like the feelings I was having were, mis so, some of them I was misinterpreting because I hadn't gotten there yet. But all of this was in preparation for the course to be, to, to enter my path. So this was a preparation. Now, after that, like the next day for me, that turning point was like, what do I do? Like, you know, imagine getting like, like the truth of who you are <laughs> in one yeah. night. And what do you do? Like, I was just crying. Um, and then I went through about six months, like a dark night of the soul. It's almost like when you pour water into a dirty glass all the dirt came up at once, which yeah. it was like, I can't do this anymore. There must, like the course says, there must be a better must way. Be. Like there must be a better way to live. And so that was all, I feel very much like set up for me to find the course. Yeah. When it came across my path, that was like that. Um, and so, <laughs> so like really, I just realized how much I got wrong about him how wrong I was, how incorrectly I was taught about who he was. He's just like pure love. And that's all he is. Um, and it, it's to this day, it's like the greatest gift of my life because it, it changed everything. My understanding of him being changed, changed my life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I resonate with everything. <laughs> Yes. Like, thank you for sharing this. And I, and I think what is important to kind of note here is that your awareness of your Christ-like nature, which Jesus came, like you said, the template for, which is a great way to mm. put it, um, came through an experience for you. So like you were taught the theology, like you were taught the fundamentals of what the world thinks Jesus is. And then it got flipped around and you really got to see, wait a minute, like Jesus is an all loving being. Therefore, like when I have <laughs> things that are not loving, well, that's got to be purified if I now want to accept myself as, as Jesus sees me, as God sees me, the truth yeah. of my Christ-like nature. And so I love that. That really is preparation for the course. And I've said that before, that I feel like the course isn't some self-help manual <laughs> or course. It really is like a, like a powerful divine teaching tool that chooses you, just like ayahuasca chooses yes. us. I believe it's like a plant medicine that you're called to. It's not meant to be used recreationally. It has a divine purpose. And when we were called to something like the Course of Miracles, we know it without a doubt. That was like me. As soon as the course came into my life, I'm like, this is it. It's like bald my face off. <laughs> 24 hours because I'm like this is the answer this is this is the answer um thank you sister this is beautiful so and I think you know what's interesting, go ahead what's interesting go ahead. about that whole thing is you know I I I speak with a lot of newer course of miracle students because I'm only you know yeah. four years in so like I'm a new student to the course of miracles like yes I experienced a couple years like a year or two there like pure bliss but like now my work has really begun where okay. like I get upset. Shit comes up for me now. Right. And it's like, sometimes I'm really, um, it's really hard for me not to like, be like, you're not doing good enough. You're not working hard enough. You're not dedicated enough. Um, and really like, this is, this is like, <laughs> like the course really kicks into gear. I feel like in that, in that like third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh year, you know, where you yeah. start to really do that excavation work, mm -hmm. you know, it's not for the, 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 
it's it's really for the strong willed uh, yeah. folks that are really want to change, really want to do this because it is hard. Yeah. Um, and I see with a lot of new Course in Miracles students who struggle with um, the ideas presented like that it's all their fault, right? The world is all their fault because like, they created it. Um, and it's very hard to, I think, be presented with those ideas if you haven't experienced um, exactly. the truth. If you haven't had like a physical experiential mm-hmm. like, of love, of yeah. what you really are. I, I would, I'd imagine, I don't know if I would have found it. Maybe, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, I completely you know? agree. That was me. I had to have my experience first before I was ready for the course and then everything made sense. But I think if I yeah. came to the course before my experience, it would be confusing because there's so much terminology in there that comes from Christianity, you know, um, but it's also reinterpreted. It's also seen through the lens of love and only the lens of love. And yeah. yeah, it's easy to interpret when it says like, I'm responsible for the world I see, right? Or this, like the key to salvation is I've done this unto myself. Like those are ideas <laughs> that when taken by the ego are like fault, they're like blame. But Jesus is helping yeah. us to see, no, but wait a minute. If you're responsible for how you feel, that means you're responsible to change it. That's empowering. That's a power. <laughs> yeah. It has nothing to do with blame at all. It's purely power. You know, and so yeah. I feel like our, our our you know next level on this planet is us to really like integrate the Christ principles that he came to demonstrate mm-hmm. when he was on living life on earth and, and to do it inwardly. Like the course is for mind mm-hmm. training, you know, like, and this is what you're saying. And I completely agree. The first two, three years of me being with the course, bliss miraculous every day of my life, <laughs> divine, like, Oh my God, screaming from the rooftops is amazing. But then the shit came in. And for me, it was having a child, right? Like it came in and it was just like, boom, smack me. I'm Oh, back to earth. I got to really work on my shit. Now, everything that I talked about for like three years, I have to apply now. Oh my God. You know, and, yeah. and it gets really real. Um, but and you're, you know, you're so great. What's so great about it that is like, now you have this like, okay, so stuff comes up, but like the distance between this shift from fear to love is, is smaller and smaller. Right. Yes. It gets easier and easier. It does get easier and easier. Yeah. It's like amazing. Hi super low and then you're like i can do this because you've now been equipped with the tools you can now like hear the holy spirit you've got jesus by your side you're surrounded by brother sister souls to help support you it becomes this like just new way of living life on earth you know mm-hmm. and it, it becomes more much more manageable and, and i say that all the time like i don't know how people could do this without jesus in the course like i just have no idea and that's why i think it's so like you even said everybody's suffering everybody's struggling and so if we can like just do our part to heal our minds and get aligned with christ's principles and god's laws and do our best every day we're not asked to be perfect but do our best every day to be the vessel and channel for this and whatever specific part or function we have like that's enough you know and if we all do that then we all have kind of like the puzzle piece that's going to like slip into this this new new world <laughs> you know that we're Yes. birthing here <laughs> yeah this is so important <laughs> i know it's so important oh, thank you oh my goodness okay let's keep going um so i think we've already touched on this a little bit um uh, but mm. maybe we'll see if there's anything else that comes out of this um but so do you you've already said this but let's maybe we can get to more specifics but mm. do you include jesus in your everyday life and work which you've already said yes but if so how Mm. Well, I mean, first of all, before my feet ever hit the floor, when I wake up, I'm like, Jesus, please guide my life today. Like that's one of the course lessons. So please God guide my life today. I like, I don't, I have to, I mean, one of the things the course has really helped me with is humbling myself because I, I really don't know what anything is for. I don't right. know really what I'm doing. Like even right now, you know, I'm I'm launching this business and I'm just like, what am I even doing? Like, what do you want me to do? Like right. I'm stressed out. Like what are you, two months of outreach to do this, to launch? Like, you know, I, I like the, the business I'm talking about is my, is my program and it came through me last year. So this was not something that came from me. This was um, last, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I had a full curriculum for young women downloaded in my head, mm-hmm. spent, you know, <laughs> 24 hours at my desk. And then the next three months that followed and then launched it. It was very easy. But now I'm kind of like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I, I just like, do you want me to just stop? I, you know, I <laughs> like there's all these thoughts that come in for me. 
how I bring God or Jesus into my life on the daily now is very much around my business because yeah. for me, that's like where my spirituality and my, um, my teaching have converged. You know, I didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I, consider, yeah, it was miraculous. Mm. I couldn't believe I couldn't have planned it better myself. Like I'm like, I, you know, like this is genius. Years. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. years ago, I was like, I want to empower young women. I've been working with them for 15 years. I love them. I had mentors growing up that practically saved me throughout my life. And if I can give that to them, I think, it, I think we I could really make a ripple in the world of love. And then that would make another ripple and then make another ripple. So, so right now, I mean, I, for me, Jesus, I'm just like, Jesus, like, what do you want me to do? Um, and, and also like asking myself, like, am I being, am I being run by my ego with this? Is this yeah. greed? Is this ego? Is this a desire for, for power or purpose? Mm -hmm. Like, because I know what my function is forgiveness. That's all mm -hmm. it is. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, uh, that's what I'm working with right now is like, do I just drop this for now and just wait for guidance? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I think like, that's one of the things that I just want everybody to know out there is like, it's like, uh, <laughs> sometimes our ego desires and our, our spiritual guidance can get guided. And I, it's right. like, for me, I need to give it as much space and prayer and meditation to identify like what's the next right step, right action to take. And also like knowing that m miracles do happen, but like, I'm a believer in like, you put the work in, you wake up at, you know, 6am, you show up for your, I'm a Virgo. So I like the idea of productivity and discipline and work. Like those things are very valuable to me. Um, so, but I have to like, be careful a little bit because I can go overboard with those things too. So yes. with Jesus, I, I, I'm just always asking him to help me stay in balance with my tendencies being used for ill and right. my tendencies being used for spirit. Yes. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what are, I have, po I have really positive carriage traits. They could go both ways. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So, I totally hear this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that this is also really, really good for, you know, if there's course students who are watching, because I've had the exact same experience where it was one thing when I felt it in my heart and felt it in my mind, it was another thing when it started to be given through me and started to become a business. I was so scared of it at the beginning. Cause I was like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean you want me to start a business? And, and, and I started to see after a while, wow, that was like the most divine, amazing thing that could have happened because now all the things I have forgiven, I have overcome, I have seen differently, I have changed and transformed. I can now give as gifts and offerings, you know, to parents and souls. Oh my God, just like you, like that's the best thing ever. But I think you're making a really, really good point that our, our skills, our characteristics, our personality, all those little things that make us me on this planet can be used either against ourselves and against others or as a blessing for others mm -hmm. and for ourselves, And it all comes back to what mind we're choosing to think with, right? And this oh, is why I love that you said, the thing that you do is you ask. That's what I do too. Ask, this is an ask and receive universe, right? As we <laughs> ask, we receive, as we knock the doors open, but that asking is our willingness to say, you lead me because I don't know. Yeah. And when we say you lead me, I don't know, we will be told everything we need to know always. And if, we, if the inspiration, the guidance is quite, not there just yet. We just have to be patient. Mm -hmm. We just have to be patient. And then the right and perfect time, like the answers will come for us to take the steps and to take the action. Um, oh. But I think that that's something I really want to highlight, like asking and yeah. trusting and patience because it's, it's his plan. And so we will be told all we need to know. That's, that's it. What is that? Take what it. I like one of my favorite uh, teachings of the course is like, yeah, like, everything is doubt pretty much like everything is just doubting your true identity. You know, it, I forget exactly how it's, how it's put, but it's like, anytime I appear anything, it's doubting my true identity. It is. So like, is. why would, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, it, I feel like it's a simple course. And as long as I look at the air, whether that's doubt or it's usually doubt. I mean, it's usually doubt. Remember? Even for me. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If I can just look at that error, I can correct it. This is amazing that you just said that. I think maybe one of the quotes that you're leaning on is 
doubt is the result of conflicting wishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you also just said there, like it could be used, you know, for the ego or it could be used for the spirit. And if we yeah. want to get something out of, let's say our businesses, get money, get um, approval, get security, get um, just being right, whatever we're trying to get, that is the conflicting goal. And we will always experience doubt. But that's why I think he gives us things like a business, because that's where we get to see our split goals. And that's where we get to hand the, the doubt and the fear and the, all the getting wait, over to him, right? So we can yeah. be just focused on like, what is this for? So I love the question and it shows up many times in the course, but what is this for? And when we get clear on what we're doing and what it's for, then it'll be evident like what voice mm -hmm. is, is dictating our actions here. And then we can come back into alignment with, with right you know action because we're in right feel. thinking. Yes. <laughs> always. You know by how you feel. Always. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. It's beautiful. Oh. This oh. is so helpful. I love this conversation because like, I just spent like the majority of the morning, like reading and like just thinking it, like filling my mind with thoughts of God and yeah. Jesus. And, and it's yeah. like, you know, this is all stuff that I need to keep remembering. And these kind of, these kinds of conversations just help me so much. It's why I do the YouTube. It's why I do all this stuff because I need to do it for my own, yeah. for my own benefit. Otherwise I, I don't know if you're not, it's like you need to share it in order to learn yeah. it in some ways, you know, those are more things from the course. He says atonement is the lesson yeah. in sharing. Right. Yeah. And giving and receiving are the same. Like those are the, honestly, I think that's why it resonates so much. Like those are the core principles I feel of my thought system. Right. And yeah. that's the laws of God. Like as you give, you receive, that's just what it is. So the more we allow ourselves to be the vessel and share, the more we hear the Holy spirits in us, the more the faith increases when other people we're talking to accept it and experience in their life, it increases our faith again. And it's just this like ping pong of like ever growing love really um mm. and and it does it comes through sharing it comes through giving uh the, the real experiential part of things anyway um yeah yeah <laughs> oh my goodness okay so i'm asking another question <laughs> oh yay okay <laughs> um how do you this will be interesting but how do you view jesus's role as teacher of humanity we might have already touched mm. on this a little bit too but we'll see a little bit well yeah i think of him as like he's the template he's the one that we're following in his footsteps like i think of it as like um we're all on a ladder and he's mm -hmm. above he's like on you know he's on the top rung he's able to move up and down it. And we're all kind of like, okay, I'm helping up the ones right behind me. The ones above yeah. me are helping me right above, you know? So it's like, we're all kind of like this cohesive unit. That's like, please grab my hand. And for whatever reason, that visual of Jay, I think it was, um, I think it was like lesson 85 or something where I think it was lesson 85. I remember because it's one of my favorite lessons where he has us do the meditation where we're in the clouds oh, and yes, yes. He's through the clouds. And he, he's like, he's just like this beam of light and he's like, take my hand. Oh, I love that one so much. Yes. I use that all the time. I mean, that's like one of my main meditations when I sit, when I'm just like feeling really down or really dark that I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I need, I need, I'm a very visual and ima my imagination is quite dominant in me. I'm an actor. So I like, it's very strong. I can utilize it to shift a lot of things. So I, I find that that imaginative tool was just super helpful for me. And it's like, That's even really if, good. even if it doesn't completely like miraculously heal me instantly, it, it helps me squeeze out like 15% more love in that moment. You know, it just helps me elevate just like a little bit percentage wise, you know, and that's all we're trying to go for. We can always squeeze out like in every moment, my, my partner um, actually channeled this the other day and he was like, if we, in every single moment we can squeeze out like 15% more of appreciation of joy of love, of gratitude. Like I thought that is so powerful when I think about that. I'm like, how can I just enjoy this moment? 15% more. <laughs> I love yes. that. It's, oh, so um, that was a little bit of a segue, but that's how I envision 
Jay. I mean, I envision him like everywhere all at once, you know, yeah. anytime he's called upon, he's there. Um, he, again, he, like you said, he's like in charge of this whole atonement. He's like, whichever light bulbs are like lit up that want this, he is like going to be your guide. Yes. I mean, sometimes I have a feeling like if I, cause I'm a super perfectionist. So coming back to this idea, I can be very hard on myself, especially with like experiencing those first few years of bliss and then having yeah. a lot of stuff come up at once, especially over the last two years, like feeling like I'm doing yeah. it wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, like, you know what I mean? It, it, like I've been very hard on myself. That's like one of the things that I have to forgive is my own like self-flagellation. Um, you know, I, I think of like, there are times where I'm like, is he still with me? Like, is he, does he still believe that I can do this? Makes me want to cry. Cause it's like, does he, is he still like, you know, my champion and kind of like helping me, you know, because it does require a choice and a willingness. And like, you know, if we keep making choices for fear in our lives, like at a certain point, like we go too far down the ladder where, yeah. you know, it's just harder to, to continue yeah. so moment to moment, day to day. Like we, like we really need to be able to choose love in those smaller moments, like, yeah. like bit by bit by bit um, to like sort of, a build a foundation, a strength, an inner yeah. strength. Um, but there are times where I'm like, are you still here? <laughs> you know, like, do you, do you still believe in me? Are you still like with me on this? Um, and I, I, I think yes, but my ego would tell me no. Right. You know, because so, it wants to rule you. <laughs> yeah. Ego is like, no, it's not. No, you're not. Pay attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's like when we have a thought and like one of um, Tina Louise Spalding has been one of my teachers has helped me a lot. Um, you know, I love what she says about like, well, what's the thought you just had? How did it make you feel? You know, yeah. if it's coming from the ego or not, you know, guidance, love, spirit will never make you feel bad. That's the ego's job. So I, I always like try to remember that. It's like, if I'm feeling in that doubtful place, well, that's the ego. And that's what we're here to like turn away from, to look at, see as an error and turn away and get beyond it. And I think that's the hardest part is like, cause we've given so much faith to the ego, yeah. years and years of faith in it, thinking it was correct. So it can be hard to turn that ship at first, but with it, I mean, that's the point of the course. That's the point of the workbook. That's what it's meant to do. It's meant to train us to love. It gets easier and easier as we practice those lessons. So thank God we have this. I mean, what, what, yeah. <laughs> what will we yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I like hear what you're saying that like Jesus is like a teacher of humanity in the sense that he's working with us intimately with anybody who asks him to be there. He works with us intimately in the inner workings of our mind to like shift those moments of fear to love and that it is our responsibility. Like, what am I thinking? How am I feeling? So that anything that is not in accordance with love, we can give to him. And that's his role in humanity uh, at this time. And, and he's there to look at the air with us. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, he's there to yeah. look at the error with us and quiet. What is the course say? To quietly correct it, to quietly undo it. So we are not meant to do this alone. And one of the things that I have, like when I, like whenever I'm really deeply in despair, which is less and less. I mean, I, it's very rare. And when I do goes and in, when I do go into those places now, for me, it's just so intol. It's so intolerable to be perfectly so honest. It's, yeah. Yeah. When you experience like the bliss yeah. that the Course in Miracles really offers, like to go into those places that I once it's so existed, obvious, yeah. it's so obvious and so like no, yeah. no, we're yeah. not, not for me, <laughs> not, not for me. Exactly. But like sometimes we do have to go into the basement. Like I, I have like been, you know, holding myself, feeling the pain of like whether that's self rejection or self hatred. Like I've had those moments where I'm like shaking and holding myself like you know I mean you would think I was crazy um you know but this is the work this is like the, the inner psychological work to like be with it 
to feel the physical pain from the emotional pain and to say to Jesus, like, I don't want to go into the basement of my consciousness alone. Like, please go with me. This is terrifying. And that's what Ken Wadley taught. I think, well, the course taught is like to actually be and look at, at the, at the error, at the tiny mad idea um, that we're separate from God, that we're somehow like un, un, unsalvageable, unforgivable is a terrible thing to kind of like come face to face with at times yeah. in yourself. Like it can yeah. be, feel very serious. Like, yeah. what have I done? How, how have I gotten, what is this living within me, this monster? And yeah. then we were like, oh, it's just a wisp of smoke. It's a cloud. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's, it's not a granite. It's not like the course says it's not a, a granite wall. It's a wisp right. of a cloud, exactly. you know? And it's like, but you don't know that until you come face to face with it. You can't know that until you are with it. Exactly. Exactly. And I, you called upon like an imagery earlier about like him holding the lamp for us. And I think that that is what is really important because when we find ourselves in these deep, dark places, and like you said, like we have to go to, we have to get in touch with, but we're not going to be able to explore and thus have them be undone unless we have the light with us. And when we're in such a dark place that we can't reach our own light, we need someone like Jesus's light to shine it with us as we look. But we do got to look on this, this dark stuff. Like that is the only way that like forgiveness can be applied to it. That is the only way we can see it differently. That is the only way we can like get honest with the mistakes that we've made. But ju- Jesus with the light will show us these mistakes from a non-judgmental perspective. It's not meant to make us feel more guilty or more shameful or more fill in the blank. It's meant to look at those things that we are harboring and be like, I don't want this anymore. This is of no use for me. Like I give this to you. And then that's the corrective. That's when the correction happens. That's when the forgiveness happens. When we let go of our grip on what seems like that granite wall, our grip on what seems like the devil, the grip on what seems so dark and hard and confusing. Like that is what we need to let go of in order for the light for Jesus, for the reinterpretation to, to be shown to us instead. So I think that that's really important. This is the fundamentals of mind training. And like we're saying, even though there are those times of super bliss, there's those times of like intense, deep mind training. And, and we need both really to ultimately decide like, which one do I want to be true for me? And even more, which one is true for God, (laughs) you know? And, and when we really can look at things from like the, the whole and complete perspective of where we come from in eternity, like obviously everything is love and all loving. And so we get to apply that here and watch it work in our lives. Yeah, have you ever felt it's so it's so have you ever felt that feeling i love what you said the grip um yeah. you know the time the the times that i feel like i've been, like with the deep dark of my soul mm-hmm. and i've been you know in bed or on the couch and like just holding myself i can feel that i'm clutching on to yeah. this negative vision of myself like, and I can, I can actually feel the squeeze around, like I, I'm holding on to self-punishment because yeah. I yeah. want it on some level. Mm-hmm. Like it feels yeah. like there's, there's um, something that I did for many, many years, which was because um, it wasn't safe to attack others. I would attack myself right. and it felt really good on some levels until uh, obviously it didn't, but there was something about it that felt good to me. Yeah. Um, it felt like, I mean, it's, it's really kind of dark. I'm like, it's dark, but it, it's true. I experienced it. And as soon as I, I, like I was laying there and I remember probably like a year and a half ago, I remember like holding this thing and I, I was like holding my wrist. Like I was trying to like give myself a, a visual image of like what I was feeling inside. And I was like, I, why don't I want to let this go? (laughs) You know, and I was praying and I was asking just for like a little bit of left, like a little release on my grip. That's all I did. That's all I asked for. I wasn't trying to like make it all go away. Take this all away. I was like, just help me empower me to release this just a little bit. And I, I, it worked and I could feel Mm -hmm. myself like slow. I mean, you know, it's so, it's so incredible. This kind of, I'm, a, I'm also a Scorpio. So I just feel things so deeply. I'm super emotional. 
Um, and I'm like, is anybody else? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> this is just me. Right? It's like, I, I, I talk openly about these things now because I don't have shame yeah. about it. I considered right. it a universal human and experience. everybody goes through it. There's nothing Everybody's to be ashamed of. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's and all their different kind of darkness. Yeah. And I think attack comes in many ways. Mine was always with food. Like I would always binge eat with food. Some people are alcohol. Some people are drugs. Some people are just emotionally, mentally, anger, whatever. Like there's so many different ways to attack ourselves. And I think at the moment that we get honest with that and realize like I am the one clutching my fist and keeping me in bondage. Jesus is yeah. not. God's not. You know, it's not the truth I'm of my nature. It. I'm doing it. You know, that that is the beginning of the freedom. Then it's like, oh, yeah. you know, um, yeah, really this is, this is a bear. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. I love I I hope who's ever listening feels like right now, like that they're not alone, that like whatever, yeah. if they are going through something really difficult, that that we all we all do. And I, I love I want to bring it back to like what Jay says. Um you know, this is not a faith that you're asked to take on. No, you know, test these practices out, like yeah. work with them, yeah. cry them, yeah. 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 have faith in this right? and see how they work because exactly. that's the Apply faith it. that will endure. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. On that note, that actually leads to the last question in a sense, like what would you say to someone who is unsure about Jesus? Who, who what would you say to someone who, yeah, maybe is in like a deep, dark spot and like needs help? Like what, what maybe message would you have for them today? Oh God. Um, that feels like such a difficult question for me to answer. I don't know why. Cause, um, because I, first of all, I have so much compassion for anyone. Yeah feeling like alone and lost and forgotten, you know, um, cast aside by, you know, and, <laughs> and it's, it's a hard thing to say to someone who I, it's one of the reasons why the course, <laughs> course in miracle students can be like, kind of like not super sympathetic or empathetic. They can be like, Dory is not even real. It's fine. You know, like you have to meet people where they are. Um, like Jesus did. Yeah. Jesus did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He did. He continues to. <laughs> continues. Thank you. <laughs> what I would say is, um, is to look for whatever joy. I mean, I really like, for me, I, I didn't go straight for Jesus. That was not something I felt. Jesus to me was an asshole. Like genuinely, I know right. that's, I'm sorry if that offends anyone out there, but like before I had my experience and before I started bringing him into my life, I was like this jerk. Like, who is he? You know, I had like massive, um, rebellious, um, anarchist, you know, screw the whole like system kind of mentality right. around this because I felt that it had caused so much pain within my own family, uh, right. so much suppression, so much whatever. Um, and so I would say like, don't try to make Jesus your butt. Like, don't try to like essentially erase what you feel like deal, like look at it. Again, like yeah. coming back to that, like, what is the idea of Jesus bringing up in you? That's the first place to start because whatever your idea is about it, that's not about the, the Jesus or the man or the system or the world. That's about like those ideas exist in you. And that can be really hard to hear as well. So you want to do this with kind of a at least a semblance of compassion for yourself. Like what I do, what I've always tried to do and that's helped me release a little bit of like the, the charge with taking responsibility for my creations is to do it with curiosity, not a sense of judgment, not a sense of yeah. like, God, why do you think this? But like, what is really going on in my mind? What do I really believe? Well, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's look at that. What are like, how is this helping me? How, like, what does this make me feel when I have this thought? So just like essentially intellectualizing it helps, I feel like, because it takes the emotional charge out of it and it yeah. can just help like curiosity. I teach this with my girls. I find that curiosity just releases the charge and helps us actually do the work without That's getting good. all the stories and feelings and stuff involved. We can just analyze it and then we can make a determination about like, do I want to keep this? Do I not? And then I would say, you know, start bringing um, something into your life. 
start calling spirit in some way into your life. It doesn't have to be Jesus. It doesn't have to be angels. Right. Doesn't have to be God. It could be nature, the power of nature. Yeah. That that was where yeah. I started when I began. Yeah. Love was I, where I started. It, you know, yeah. Right. I just thought about mm -hmm. wow, the power of a flower to continuously grow and grow and grow, or the power of the ocean. Like that is miraculous. That is beyond my understanding. That is like beyond yeah. my. Um, capacity, you know, as a human being. Yeah. So I can put my faith in that because it was clearly more powerful than me. So, or, you know, my understanding of nature shifted now, of course, yeah. but <laughs> um, at the beginning that helped me like identify, um, a way, something outside of me that was more the higher power essentially. Yes. Um, but anybody who, you know, is new to Jay, you know what, like look and look for books. Honestly, yeah. like look for books that he's channeled, like, like ask for a book that will help you develop a relationship with. There are so many amazing books out there. Books were like my way in to my relationship to Jesus. Now. I mean, I remember reading channeling books like way back that were probably channeled by Jay, you know, like right. they just didn't... <laughs> now I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, wow, that was exactly what I'm learning now. So if you just ask for a book that will help you develop a healthier, more loving relationship, I think that's also a really great, fun way to do it, you know, because also when our consciousness is very painful to exist in, when it normally is, when we're coming to the course, it helps to kind of at least temporarily read something. So essentially like tap into a different consciousness can be really helpful. Yeah. It gives us a break from our own attacking painful consciousness. Yes. you know? Oh, I love this. I kind of want to, yeah, just highlight the things that you said here because it's really good. And I think the first thing is be curious. And and mm -hmm. I know that that was really important along my journey too, because I used to have the inner language, like what the F is wrong with you? Like I would be so <laughs> mean to myself. Like I make a mistake or drop something on the floor, like, what the F is wrong with you? And instead I, I would start to go, oh, well, that's curious. You know, why did that just happen? And then I can see, oh, well, I was being totally unmindful or whatever. But like you with the curiosity outlook, it takes the judgment away. And instead, you're just looking. And I love that because it puts you in the position of the observer, which is technically the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. And you get to look down upon what you're thinking and what you're feeling from a different yeah. perspective. And I would even add on that to like write it down, write down what your beliefs are about you, about Jesus, about the church, about the world, about whatever, like write down your beliefs and your thoughts about these things. And do not be afraid to look like don't judge them. Like they're just thoughts, you know, some have come from other people most of the time, <laughs> you know, yeah. and just write them down and, and just get them out. But like you said, that they might come from other people, they might come from other places, other sources, but they're in your mind now. So they're yours. And now that they're in your mind, it's your responsibility. So I love mm -hmm. that you said, just get curious, look at them. I personally like writing things out, but that's just because I do that sort of thing. Um, but it also mm -hmm. allows you to look at it again and again. And then at the same time, like you're saying, then call upon a power greater than yourself. It doesn't have to be Jesus at first. Like it really doesn't. We don't have to like bring people to Jesus. Jesus will be brought to that person's life when they ask and when they're ready. Oh, but yeah. like if we can just find a small little opening, yeah, just, just increase that's your willingness. That's all. <laughs> yes, that's cool. I love yeah. that. Increase your willingness. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, because my mind was like a, a twelve year, a ten year journey to yeah, for Jesus exactly. to actually be like, hey, I'm here. I'm cool. <laughs> hey, I'm cool. Yeah. yeah. We know each other, you know, kind of exactly. Like, it's like, oh, yes. I'm so yeah. wrong. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my partner calls him Buddy Jesus. <laughs> he calls him Buddy Jesus. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. I think there's a little Buddy Jesus meme going around. I love there that. is. I know. You're right. <laughs> well, this is so beautiful, Katie. I've loved everything about this conversation. Is there any Me final too. thoughts that are maybe coming to mind, coming to heart that you want to share? Or? Um, Maybe not. You know, I just want to share with folks like, like we're doing it. If you are reading the course for, you know, at least 20 minutes a day, if you are looking through the lesson as you rush off to work, at least you're on your way. You know, I, I mean, I also think, and this is mostly, I'm saying this for myself, but like what I want to dedicate to is like doubling down on my efforts mm -hmm. with mind training, doubling down on my efforts. Like instead of just reading the course for a half hour, I want to read it for an hour. Um, right. Instead of like, kind of sometimes, like I think the hardest thing is not having the structure of the workbook. And if y'all right. are out there, like I really appreciated like that diligent, it forced me 
to do it. Yeah. I was one lesson very a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. for me, it's just like, you know, I'm just sharing it with the whole audience because like, if you feel inspired, I am also rededicating. I mean, every day is a rededication to yeah. this course. It's not like a day goes by where I'm like, the book is over there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's my favorite book. I have like every version all over my house. <laughs> every room in the course. Oh my God. I have to, do I even have my book? Let me show you mine. <laughs> You're so cute. Oh my God. Let's get you in here. I don't have it on me, but it's like literally torn up the, like yep. it's, it's, it's dog-eared. It's written all over. It's kind of like too. a symbol of my love for the, those words and yeah. that message and the, the whole, the whole thing, the whole thought system. Exactly. Amen. Me too. I've had so many versions because I just keep using them, which is a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I also want to set an intention that anybody who like watches this just gets exactly what they need from this yeah. uh, conversation that like, we're really just having this conversation as a, a way of uh, giving what we've received. And it's yeah. <laughs> like, this is really what we're all about. It's like, let's just go home together. Let's take each other home. Um, and just like Jay is doing with us, you know, he's just, he's just, we're going home with him, you know? <laughs> He's not leaving us behind. Oh, yeah, exactly. And on that note, amen. That's so um, complete and beautiful. And I'll be sure to have all of your links to everything that you're doing below so people can get in contact with you That's and stay awesome. connected with you. And I just, I adore you. I'm so glad that Jesus brought us together, which I know he totally Me did. So also know why and how that happened. <laughs> I adore you too. I've, I've just... Like we had one conversation like yeah. over the last couple of weeks and it was just like, I was crying and like, I felt, um, this like very, br this brightness to our conversation. Mm -hmm. I felt brighter in conversation with you. So I was like, oh, that's a good sign. You know, that's, like, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I've so appreciated you bringing me on for this. I, I was really excited to do it. So this was like Absolutely. so fun. I was actually a little nervous. I was like, am I like, you know, what I was I worried that I, yeah, but, but I, I, I've realized that, um, when you've done it enough, when you've done the work at like, you know, you, you it's in you, you know, yeah, like the ideas exactly. and the, the knowledge and the wisdom, it's like, it's a part of me. It's remembered wisdom. Yeah. So it's like just trusting the Holy Spirit to speak through me today was really all I was focused on. So well, thank beautiful. you for giving thank me that service. Absolutely. And I felt yeah. it and we received it and I appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Thank you, thank you everyone for being with us and watching too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks everybody. Sending you love. Yay.